Hi everybody, uh, this is Alicia DeCastro here. I'm at The Woods and I am bringing to you guys a yoga for runners class per some requests for the community. Um, I'm a runner myself and have been hitting the roads a lot recently. So today my goal is to take you guys through about um, 20 to 30 minute flow, something that I would normally do after a run or if I'm just feeling really sore and achy. Um, so if you popped onto this and you're a runner, you walk, or you're doing any sort of activity that's just leaving you feeling tired and um, sore, definitely feel free to um, join along here. Um, just a little preview. The main goal I have for you guys today is just to really try and focus on using your breath work to enhance the movements and flow throughout class. It's going to be pretty basic movements compared to a normal vinyasa flow or power class. Um, but the goal here is to really deepen some of those movements, especially if you're feeling sore and just let the breath and movement um, help enhance your recovery in whatever way you need it. Um, at this time, if you are a runner or an athlete, you may be familiar with and have some of these guys here, whether it be a foam roller or a little roller that you can use for your foot. Um, so I'll give you a moment to pause the video and encourage you to just take maybe five minutes or so rolling out the bottom of your feet and um, your legs starting from the calves all the way up to your hips and maybe back if you'd like. Um, and then we can get going from here. All right, so if you're back on here or just want to continue along without doing that, we're going to start class today in just a seated position, however you feel comfortable. Just ground ourselves here with some breath work to get going and get present here. So maybe just ground through your sit bones, press through the floor to lift that heart. And just sink into your posture naturally here. You can close your eyes if you'd like. And just start to tune into your breath. Lengthening each inhale and exhale. Start to bring some awareness to the breath and how it's moving your body. So you might feel your stomach expanding, rising on the inhale, falling on the exhale. Maybe you feel it all the way up through your ribs and your chest. Just take note of that here. Notice if you were able to calm down the mind, therefore calming down the body as well. It's always a great practice to just start with, or maybe you only have time for this each day. Just taking a couple more breaths here, bringing it back to a normal rhythm. Starting to work into our bodies from the top of our heads into the neck. We'll just add a little neck roll here. So maybe dropping one ear down to your shoulder, shaking your head yes. Bringing the chin to your chest and just rolling the neck around. Staying in tune with your breath here. Maybe pausing when your ear reaches the other side. Pausing wherever you need to. And 
you come back up to center and just roll those shoulders up and back a few times. Might feel some kinks in here. That's okay. Just take note of any pieces of discomfort and send breath to wherever you need it. You can roll the shoulders forward a couple times as well. And once you feel evened out, I'm just going to reach those arms up high on an inhale and really try and press through your sit bones, still grounded on the floor, reaching the fingertips to the ceiling and really reaching the upper body away from the lower body. See if you can find that connection in those hips, which tend to be a sore spot for runners. On your exhale, just bring one hand down. If you're mirroring me here, reach the left arm up high. Take another inhale and exhale. Send that reach over and still try and press that left hip into the floor, keeping an even amount of pressure on both hips. On an inhale, coming back up to center, reaching up high again. Exhale, send that right hand over, pressing through both sit bones again. Then taking those hands down over to the left, really pressing through the fingertips again, pressing that right hip into the floor. Maybe just dropping the head, folding over. Coming through center. Checking in here with that breath and seeing if you can notice the rise and fall of the stomach. And then over to the right. Really pressing through those fingertips to send your hips back. Then coming back up to center, let's just interlace those hands behind your back and press the knuckles into the floor. Inhale, open up that chest. Maybe send your gaze up to the ceiling. Let that heart open up. Pull those shoulders back. Maybe let out a smile here. If you're taking my class, I usually try to signal that once in a while. And then releasing, bringing the grip to the front, and this time tucking the chin to the chest, really pressing with those fingertips away from you. Feeling the stretch on the back of the ribs, maybe. And then on an inhale, just opening those arms up wide. Exhale, fold. Give yourself a little hug. And we'll just do this a few times, taking some flying breaths here. Just letting that spine ripple. Adding your breath to each movement. And when your arms feel tired, you can come out of that. I'm going to come onto all fours here, work into some cat cows. Before we get going, I just want to bring a little bit of awareness to this lower portion of our core here. It'll come up a few times in class. So I just want everybody to, you know, maybe bring their hand to their hip and just try and tuck their hips underneath them a little bit more. So you feel that lower part of your core tighten. That's going to protect our lower back and also just as you work those muscles, it helps to hold those hips in place. Um, it's really great for running and preventing injuries or um, any other sports as well. So now with a nice flat back and an inhale, just dropping that stomach. Binding cow. Exhale, draw the belly button up into the spine for cat. Just 
taking a couple more series of breaths here. Going at your own pace if you need to. And at the end of your next exhale, just coming back to center. We're just going to do a little thread the needle here. Playing the left hand on the floor, reaching the right arm up with an inhale. Exhale, send that hand through. You can reach the left arm up above head, maybe around your back, grabbing your right thigh. Doing whatever feels good for you today. Just remember this flow is meant to enhance your recovery. And on your next breath, coming out of that one, switching over to the other side, planting through the right hand. Exhale, thread the needle. Find that breath here. And on your next breath, reaching high, feeling that length on the side of the body again, coming back down to center. Now to keep this recovery base, we're gonna do a few of these movements from the floor before we get into um, some up dog, down dog flows. So bring some awareness back to that lower core, tucking those hips underneath you a little bit. And we're gonna reach that right foot out, left arm out. I just want you to breathe here. Maybe pulse that right leg a little bit. If you want a mini workout. And then on your next inhale, send it high. Exhale, draw the knee to the chest and plant that right foot in between your hands. You can release those toes on the left foot. Inhale, come up high. And exhale, sink into this here. Now check in with your knee and ankle alignment. If you find that your knee is coming really far past your ankle, just walk your foot forward a little bit to protect that knee here. We're just gonna add a little movement now. So on the inhale, I want you to focus on pressing through the floor to lift that heart, reaching up out of the lower body. Find length, exhale, sink into it. Maybe even cactus those arms if that feels good. Inhale, reaching up again, sinking back down into it. Now I'll give you guys a couple other motions to play around with. On an inhale, reaching up, exhale, twist over that right leg, maybe reaching the right arm behind you again. Noticing how this one feels compared to just sinking into it straight forward. Inhale, reaching up one more time, maybe planting that right hand down, reach the left arm up a little further. And as you sink into it, reaching over to the right, really opening up the iliopsoas as well on top of just our hip flexors here. And then just coming back through center, the right leg might be feeling sore now, so framing that foot and then slowly pushing those hips back to straight in the right leg. Coming into a little hurdler here. And I just like to take some time, especially with those sore legs to maybe rock back and forth, point and flex that right foot. You can even add your, bring your hand to your foot, give it a little massage on the front, just stimulating that fascia in here. It's gonna help to send signals all the way up your leg, just helping to tell them, okay, it's time to release a little bit here. Just maybe adding a bend back into the knee, wiggling those hips back. Just taking a couple more breaths here. Lengthen them a little bit. And pause where you need to. And 
on your next breath, just walk those hands back up to frame the front foot. We're just going to come into a high runner's lunge for a sec and scoot that left foot back. Maybe send the heel a little bit further as we sink into the hip. Plant that left hand down. Reach the right arm up. Find a twist here. And then bring that arm and hand to the inside of the right foot and just walk that right foot maybe out to the corner of your mat. Drop the back knee and we'll find lizard. Again, taking your time and using your breath to slowly move you into this posture. So maybe pressing up through the floor on an inhale, finding your length. Exhale, sinking a little deeper, walking onto those forearms. Maybe peeling that right foot open, coming onto your pinky toe. And just taking another few breaths here. Try to calm that mind. And just focus on the movement of the breath in your body. Maybe send it to that hip right now. And then slowly come on out of that one, framing that right foot again. And we're just going to slowly send it back. Just give it a little shake out. And let's just roll the hip around a bit, circling it a few times. When you're ready, you can plant that right foot down. We're going to bring that awareness back into our core, tucking the pelvis underneath us. This time, reaching the left foot out long, right fingertips forward. Breathing into it, finding your stability here. And then reaching that foot up high, drawing the knee to the chest, planting it in between your hands. On an inhale, reaching those arms up high. Exhale, sinking into it. Taking a minute to adjust if you need to. And then adding in some movement if that feels good. On an inhale, reaching up out of the lower body. Exhale, sink into it. Open up those arms, maybe gaze up. Inhale, reaching up again. Exhale, sink into it. Maybe a little deeper this time. Forgot to mention on the other side, you could always squeeze your glute here. So on the right side and see if that adds a little of a deeper stretch to the um, hip flexor. And then adding in those other couple movements on an inhale, reaching up, maybe coming up for air, releasing that left leg. Exhale, twisting over the left leg. You can bring your hands down like this if that feels better. Inhale on twisting, reaching up one more time, bringing that left arm down, right fingertips to the ceiling, and sinking into it as you reach over to your left side. And on the next breath, coming up through center, giving that left leg a break and just pushing those hips back. And again, just really using the freedom here to do what you need to. Rocking forward and back. Your shin might be feeling tight, so maybe you want to point your foot and just hold that for a minute here. Or maybe it's the opposite and you need to flex the foot to stretch the calf a little deeper. You can wiggle into those hips. This series of movements here is something that I do after most of my runs and any other time when I'm feeling sore. It's a great way to get into all different parts of the legs and, and hips here. So really take what you can out of this class and video and just use it wherever you see fit. the end of your next breath just coming back up to center framing that front foot pushing up into a high runner's lunge 
Maybe walking the right toes back, sinking into that heel. Plant that right hand and find a twist. And then bring that left hand to the inside of the foot. Walk it out. Drop the right knee and release those toes. And again, take a couple breaths here to find wizard. At this point, you've also probably taken note of maybe some imbalances from one side to the other. And just really try and take note of that and honor those differences that you're feeling. So for example, my right side is so much tighter than my left one. So I just take a little extra time to get into the postures and send a little extra breath into that right hip. But just staying judgment free here. And coming back up through center. You can scooch that right leg in and just send that left leg long. Give it a little shake out and maybe roll up the hip. You might have heard mine pop there. From here, we're just going to tuck the toes underneath us and get a little back of the foot stretch. So, you know, you just can take note of how intense this feels for you. Maybe you have to stop here. Or maybe you can walk those hands all the way up the thighs. But wherever you are, just take a few breaths. Breathe into any discomfort you're feeling. Maybe release another smile, it helps. Filling up for one more breath. And then slowly coming out of that one, maybe giving those ankles a little wiggle. From here, we are finally going to make it into downward facing dog. So propping those toes again and pressing through the floor to send those hips up and back. And keep those knees nice and bent here, especially for the first one. Filling up for another deep breath. Sigh it out if you need to. And slowly walk those feet up to the hands. On an inhale, pressing through the floor, maybe bringing the hands up to our thighs to press away from the lower body as we find a halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Maybe release that neck. Shake your head yes and no. Sorry, I have a hood on. And then on your next breath, bring some awareness into those toes grounded in the floor. Draw that belly button into the spine. And roll up one vertebrae at a time. Bring those shoulders up and back at the top. And then reach those arms up high. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, find your halfway lift again. Exhale, fold. We'll plant those hands. Step back to a plank, or if this is a super recovery day for you, just drop down onto those knees. Do whatever you need to do. We'll take this first chaturanga nice and slow, lowering down on an exhale. Inhale, press through the floor to lift that heart. Maybe lift those hips up off the ground. And you can send your gaze over one shoulder and the other, really opening the front side of the body. And then slowly coming back to downward facing dog on your exhale. And just walk it out this time, bending the right leg and the left. Finding your breath. Using it to guide you today. And just walking those feet back up to the hands. Inhale, find a halfway lift. Exhale, fold. And then roll up one vertebrae at a time. Shoulders up at the top. Reach those arms up high. 
and maybe even come onto your toes, test your balance a little bit here. That's also important for staying injury free. And you can send that back down, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, plant those hands. Step back to your plank or modified plank. Lower down, chaturanga on an exhale. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Pausing here for a minute and just feeling that breath inside of you again. Maybe you can hear it. Then we're going to send that right foot up high. Draw the knee to the chest. Plant the foot in between your hands. And let's just set up for warrior one, dropping that back heel. Toes pointed toward the left corner of your mat. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, maybe sink into it. Really square those hips forward. And then from here, we're going to interlace the hands behind the back. If that's too intense, you could always just bring your hands to your hips. Maybe walk that right foot out a little bit. Reach that chest up wherever you are. Inhale. Exhale, fold. Maybe bring that right shoulder to the inside of the knee. And you can release the neck if that feels good. Just shaking the head yes and no again. This. You can release those hands, reach back up through center, drop the left hand down to the back leg, and exhale, reverse this. And try and feel that connection here between the lower body and the upper body, right in that hip. Maybe on an inhale, reach up out of it again to find some length. Exhale, sink a little deeper. We're going to inhale back up through center. You can step that back foot in a little bit if you need to. Square those hips forward. And we're just going to fold halfway. I told you guys this would come back up again. Just want you to tuck those hips underneath you, tuck that pelvis underneath you, and tighten that lower abdomen. Really protect the lower back. And then maybe fold all the way. You can bring your hands down to some blocks if you have them, your ankles or the floor wherever you are just breathing into it finding a little length on the inhale and then sinking deeper on the exhale really try and send that right hip up and back so maybe they're even I don't even know if mine are but they're, I'm trying today Filling up for one more breath. Breathing into any discomfort. Exhale, let something go. And then you can add a bend back into that front knee. Let's inhale, reach back up, find some more length. Sink into that warrior one. And then bring those hands down. And just step back to your downward facing dog, maybe shaking out the right leg if you need to. Sending those hips up and back, really pressing through the floor with the fingertips and toes. And then sending the left leg up high, drawing the knee to the chest and finding warrior one on this side. Pressing through the floor, lifting that heart and then sinking a little deeper. Maybe just embracing your balance here for a sec. Finding your warrior. And then interlacing those hands behind your back, drawing the knuckles down past your tailbone. Inhale, look up. Send that heart up. And then exhale, fold. You can walk that left foot out if you need to again. Releasing the neck here, shaking the head yes and no. And 
then on an inhale, coming back through center, reaching those arms high, bring that right hand to the back of your leg and reversing this. You can play around with bending and straightening the knee. No rules here. The only rule is just listening to your breath and doing what feels good for you, whatever is going to enhance your recovery today. Coming back through center, maybe stepping that right foot in, squaring those hips and folding halfway, drawing that belly button into the spine, tucking the pelvis, and then maybe walking those hands all the way down. Send the left hip up and back a little further if you can. And then maybe add a little bend back into the left knee. Reach up one more time. Find that length and sink into your warrior one. And fold. This time we're gonna step back to our plank. Lower down, chaturanga. Inhale. And exhale. We're going to step the feet back to our hands here. Find a halfway lift. Exhale, fold. And then inhale, roll up one vertebrae at a time. Reach those arms up high. Let's test the balance again here. Mine is not good today. And send them back down. This time we're just going to interlace the hands up top. Really press through the floor again to reach the whole body up. And then just send the hips over to one side, hands to the other. Inhaling up through center. Just going back from side to side, pausing where you need to. You can always send those hips forward another inch or two to really open up the front side of the body. This is something, whether you're a runner or just any human in this day and age, that can be so good for you because we spend a lot of our days sitting down or you know, bringing those knees up high. So being able to reverse that is so good. Hmm. On an exhale, we're just going to forward fold again. Inhale, find halfway lift. Exhale, fold, plant those hands. Step back to your plank. Lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, to up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Coming into another mini flow here. We're going to send the right leg up high. Draw the knee to the chest and find a wider stance as we open up for warrior two. Now here I'm going to lead you guys through a couple different poses and then have you flow back and forth through them. So that way you can really use your own breath to enhance the movement. So first we're going to reach forward and find side angle. Maybe fingertips to the floor. Maybe you want to rest your forearm on your leg. Just peel that left shoulder up and back. And then inhale up through center. And just reverse that. Taking the bend out of the knee if that feels good. Or sinking very deep into it. And then just taking this to your own breath a few times. Inhaling through center. Exhaling. Sinking back into warrior two. Pausing where you need to. And I'm just going to flow a couple times here. But you guys do whatever feels good. Taking one more series of breath, even things out. And then coming back through center, turning all toes toward me. We're just gonna press through the floor again, lift that heart, 
Really press through the pinky toes to find a forward fold here. Checking in halfway, drawing the belly button into the spine. And then lowering down all the way to the floor or to a block. Maybe you need to get deep into the stretch. You can walk those hands to the back, past the heels. Just come back to your breath again. And then we're just gonna frame the left foot here, coming into warrior two on this side, widening the stance again if you need to. Bending into that left leg, cartwheeling those arms up and open. And really press through the floor, lift that heart, reach in all directions, and then sink into it. Find your side angle. Inhale up through center and reverse. And then taking a few series of breath here. Be tucking those hips a little further under you. And noticing some places where you feel the stretch. I know we do these poses a lot throughout our classes, but maybe this time noticing where you feel the stretch over where you feel the discomfort and pain today. Evening it out on both sides here with another breath or two. And then coming back through center, we're just going to turn all toes forward one more time. Take our fold. You can take a breath at center. And then we're just going to walk the hands over to one side. Maybe sink into that. And then over to the other. And I'm just going to allow you guys to make your choice here, whether you want to stay up high or start bending into one knee and the other. Be slowly making your way into a full skandasana here. Or maybe you only make it this far today. Just do whatever feels good. Stretching out those hamstrings here, maybe even the calf if you bring those toes up. Taking another couple breaths to even it out again. And you can slowly walk those feet in a bit, coming into a deep sumo squat, finding malasana. Now, if you have any hip issues, just be careful of this one. Maybe just come down onto the knees, but if the hips are feeling good, we can just do a little hip scrape here. Maybe rocking from side to side. Feel free to keep those fingers on the floor if you need to. Try and fill up that lower belly again with your breath. Notice if you feel any difference when you really let that belly expand. And then just slowly coming out of that one. We're just going to reverse that and open up the hips again. You can just take a mini back bend or find camel. I'll just walk you guys through that. So knees down on the floor. Maybe tuck those toes if that feels good. Fingertips facing down. Hands on your lower back. And really roll those shoulders up and back. Try and tuck those elbows behind you. And just slowly start to push the hips forward first. And this might feel really intense and good for today. You can stop here and just enjoy this. Or if you'd like to, walk the hands down to the heels. Come into full camel. Just take a few breaths here. And 
and then slowly coming out of it using your hands for assistance. We're just gonna drop down forward, come into child's pose here, pushing the hips back, pressing through the fingertips. Maybe take a really deep breath here. Exhale, sigh it out. And one more time, inhale. Exhale, let something go. Slowly come back up to center. Just gonna do a little floor stretch here. You can bring, it's supposed to be mirroring you and I didn't last time around, but left foot in, right foot out. And really press through both sit bones here. I'm gonna walk you guys through um, a little flow from the floor, just embracing different versions of a hamstring stretch and then opening up the front of the hips again. So on an inhale, pressing through the floor with those sit bones, reaching the hands up high and really turning toward that right foot. Exhale, forward fold. And again, maybe taking those couple of breaths to inhale, find length, exhale, sink a little bit deeper. And then just reaching that left arm up, peeling that shoulder open, finding length on an inhale again. Exhale, sinking deeper. You might feel this one more along the side of the body or if you've got some tight, pesky hips, that might feel good. And then inhale, come up through center. Let's plant that hand down behind you. Reach the right arm around. Press through the floor to press up with the crown of your head. And just find a little twist here, maybe sending your gaze over that left shoulder. And then coming back through center, bringing that left hand up a little more forward, planting that right foot on the floor. And then we're just gonna send the hips up as we sweep the right arm up and back and really try and send those hips another inch or two forward. Just enjoying this front side of the body opening one more time. And you can slowly come back down and switch over to the other side here. This time, left leg long. Reach those arms up high and an inhale, ground through both sit bones. Turn toward that left foot and fold. Flex the foot here. Really try and press through the floor, lifting the heart. And then maybe trying to pull the forehead a little bit closer to the toes as opposed to curling like this. And then coming to the other variation, peeling that right arm up and open. Coming up through center and finding your twist here. Press through the floor to reach up with the crown of your head. And send the gaze over the right shoulder. And then on twisting here, bring that right hand up a little more forward. Left foot on the floor and sweeping the right foot back. So we open up the hips. You can even bring your hand to your lower back and just give them a little push. And 
and then slowly lowering back down to center. You can sweep those legs around to the front. And we're just gonna ground through the floor again. I just want everybody to inhale, reach that heart up, and then bring their attention back to that lower core and draw the belly button in. And as you slowly lower down, I want you to feel that lower back just really touching the floor with each vertebrae. From here, we'll just take a couple bridge poses. So, planting those feet on the floor, maybe right underneath the knees, be reaching those arms down long, and then bringing awareness to those hips. I want you to bring your hand underneath your back and really tuck the pelvis underneath. And once you feel the spine pressing into the fingertips, you can release them. Once you've got the tightness in your core, then you can squeeze the glutes and reach those hips up on an inhale. Drawing the inner thighs together. Exhale, lower down slowly, draw those knees into your chest. Rock from side to side. I'll do that one more time. Grounding through the feet. Really tucking that pelvis, pressing the lower back into the floor to activate your core. And then pushing those hips up. Sometimes I even walk my hands underneath and just press those hips up a little further. That might feel good, like a nice little release here. And slowly lower back down. Draw those knees into the chest. Maybe open up for happy baby. Grabbing the outside of the feet, the ankles, or your toes. You can rock from side to side here. Extend one leg out and the other. Just reach those heels up to the ceiling. Roll out the ankles. And bring your knees into your chest. Squeeze the right one in a little tighter, send the left leg long. And just find a twist, bring that leg over to the left side. Try and peel the right shoulder onto the floor still. And send your gaze over the right fingertips. And really just start to slow down that breath again. Come back to focusing on each inhale and exhale. Draw those knees back to center. And squeeze the left one in tight, right leg out long. And find your twist. Feel the rise and fall of your stomach. And then coming up through center, you can just squeeze into a ball. Inhale, tighten everything. And just release those legs down. Or if you have a wall next to you, you can always bring your legs up to really let them flush out. Take whatever way feels best for you for Shavasana. Send those palms up to the ceiling. Let the shoulders peel into the floor. Relax that spine. And let those hips peel into the floor as well. Just 
coming back to the breath, back to the rising and falling of your stomach, and bringing your focus back here whenever the mind wanders. Feel free to stay here for as long as you'd like, or if you'd like to conclude your practice, you can come back up to a seat. Hands to heart center. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this practice. Please, please feel free to leave any comments, questions, or anything else you'd like to see. But hope your bodies are feeling more refreshed. Namaste.